Okay, so how many of you are calendar averse? Okay, I'll explain in a moment what calendar averse means. It doesn't mean that you don't own a calendar. Oh my goodness, you should own a calendar or a diary or something. But when I heard this on a video a few weeks ago about being calendar averse, I was like, yes, that is me. So I'm wondering if you're calendar averse too. Okay, I'll tell you what I'm talking about. The other day I was listening to a video by a wonderful lady named Jessica Stansbury and she admitted that she was calendar averse. And when I heard her say this, I was like, oh my goodness, I can totally relate. And so it doesn't mean that you don't have a calendar, that you don't put things in a calendar. I am absolutely all for putting things in, in a calendar. What calendar averse means is that we don't like having our calendars full up with stuff, with bookings, with appointments, with tasks, with meetings. My goal is to have my calendar as empty as possible. I don't need to do all the stuff. And I thought that maybe there was something wrong with me when I was talking about being calendar averse. Well, I never had the words for it. Now I have the words for it. But when I would say that I love not having social stuff on, I love not having lots of meetings, I always wondered if others thought I was a little unusual. So I found in COVID, we've had a lot of time to think and change our thoughts on things. And we've all slowed down, we've done less things because we've been forced to. But since things have started opening back up again and we've been able to go out and do things, I've found that people are almost trying to cram in the last two years into six months. And to be honest, I have loved having less things to do. It has been so much less stress on me. I'm not so exhausted and tired. I don't forget so many things because I'm trying to run from one thing to the next. And it just makes me feel calmer. When I know that I've got literally nothing on for that weekend, or I have an afternoon during the week where I haven't got anything scheduled or anything that I have to do, I feel so much better. I don't feel that I need to fill my calendar with things. I look forward to those empty spaces in my calendar. Now, I'm not going to say that everyone thinks like me and feels the same. The reason I'm sharing this video with you is because when I heard the term calendar averse and someone else was like me and felt the same and was embracing this, it made me feel so much better. So I wanted to share this concept with you. And I also wanted to find out, well, how many of you out there are feeling calendar averse? Do you have clear space in your calendar? Do you rejoice in those days when you don't have things on? Or are you wishing that you could perhaps be calendar averse, but you're not sure how to do it, if you should do it, if that's what life is all about? Look, I don't know the answer to all of these things, except to know that I think that less is more. I don't think we should be being busy for the sake of it. I don't think we should be having to do all of the things because so many others are out there doing it. If it doesn't bring you joy, if it doesn't invigorate you, if it doesn't energize you, then you shouldn't feel the need to have to go and do all the things. Or you can take time off from some of those things, have a break. It is okay to stop and to pause and to slow down. So this was just a short, quick video to share with you the concept of being calendar averse. I'd love to know your thoughts. Are you for this concept? Are you thinking, no, Abby, I love to have my calendar full of things, of activities, of work, of tasks. I'd love to hear from you. I'd love to know your thoughts. And I'd love to know if you're starting to pull back and make some clear space in your diary with no plans, with nothing to do, with no responsibilities in those spaces. Let me know what you think about the concept of being calendar averse.